was struck when I read the book by these moments that you, you draw so beautifully. I mean, a lot of this happens because of chance, right? So you have this woman who has this, who's born with this really wonderful talent. She picks up a, a guitar for the, the first time and it speaks to her in a way that she, it moves her to, to really explore it and make it her own. And then so much later in life, she has another chance encounter that would bring her back to an instrument and to a form, music, that had meant so much to her in her early life. And it seems like there's this wonderful tale of, I don't want to say never give up, but always be open. Yeah, I think that's partly why I wanted to share the message of her story, because there's the message of never give up, and there's the message that old people can do cool things. <laughs> and um, there's the message that just because something's lying and hiding doesn't mean it's not there. Yes. Um, it can wait and still flower late in life. And there's a time for things and there's not a time for things. For her, it wasn't time. And, and also there were structural things in place that prevented her from doing that. Mm -hmm. She was a woman. She was poor. She was black. She um, had to do domestic work. She couldn't be a musician. I mean, that was not practical. Right. And also, and also not necessarily condoned by her religious life mm -hmm. that, that mm -hmm. she was surrounded by. And she had her first daughter when she was 16. Right. So, or her only daughter, actually, her only child, and so her life wasn't set up to be a musician, and she didn't have privilege. So, it was a chance encounter with the Seegers that allowed her to. I think. I mean, maybe she would have discovered it in another way, also, like mm -hmm. we discovered her passion for music. But right. it happened to be that chance encounter that um, changed her life and um, changed the lives of other people who were inspired by her. Freight train, freight train. about speaking to young people that you thought there was a connection to be made through this this woman who you admit most of them will never heard of and some of this music they don't know because they haven't grown up with folk music yeah I think it was that she was a young player she was a not a child prodigy but because people didn't know about her really but in a way she was a child prodigy self taught and I like the idea of giving children the idea that they could do things their own way mm -hmm. and that you don't have to just follow all the rules and do everything exactly to the book. You can turn the thing upside down and do it your own way and that might be even a better way. And so I liked that message. I'm a mother and I had been, I was seeped in at that stage and still am in children's picture books and I just love the art form. I think it's a really beautiful art form and I love reading to kids and looking at the pictures and I mean, it just seems like a kind of natural thing, and I'm not a playwright. I'm not interested in necessarily theater or, or that kind of realm, so it just felt like a realm that was comfortable to me. Um, I have to say, as um, a left-hander and who struggled with guitar, I wish that I had known that you could pick up the guitar and just turn it upside down and you know, feel comfortable with it because I struggle with, you know, I had my, the strings were, everybody had to restring them and did all sorts of machinations for me to be able to play guitar and it just seemed, it never felt right. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, yeah. you know, again, I, I love what you said about, you know, sometimes you just pick it up and turn it the way you think you ought to play it and, and magic can happen that way too. It's wonderful to have her come alive in this way. And I was going to ask you if you could talk a little bit about the illustrations and what that process was like. Yeah. So when, I didn't know this, but when I wrote the book, I basically had to hand it over to the publisher to find that they decided who the illustrator would be, and that's very common. Mm -hmm. uh, the writer doesn't usually get to decide. And they asked me ahead of time, like, do you like her work, Tatiana's work? And I said, yeah. But she had only done, like, large-scale paintings and maybe drawings and street art, and, and she had never done a picture book. So I wasn't exactly sure what she would do or the treatment that she would give it, but she did such a beautiful job with it, and half of or not 
more of the success of the book is because of her beautiful art. I wanted to ask you to read the first line of your book. Libba Cotton heard music everywhere. She heard it in the river when she brought in water for her mother. She heard it in the axe when she chopped wood for kindling. She heard it in the freight chain moving down the truck near her home. I love the first line of the, it's just, I mean, it gets you right there. Um, she heard music oh, everywhere, which is something that, um, again, I think it's one of her great gifts that she was born with, that she was able to tap into that at such an early age. And uh -huh. music creates communities. And I think the work that you have done with this book um, is an example of that. Um, people connecting across races and generations and geography and time. Um, mm -hmm. It's the thing that music can do so well. Yeah. I really appreciate everything that you've done to bring this story to life. And, um, thank you. Thank you for this.